If you've had a chance to use Webmail or OWA in the new upgraded Office 365, you'll probably agree that it's very nice. Although running Outlook locally offers tons of functionality, we have some clients that are moving to Office 365 Webmail exclusively. Hi, it's Brian Riley, one of the Liftoff guys, here with 10 ways to become a Webmail power user in Office 365. Let's first log directly into our Office 365 Webmail account. We do that by going to mail.office365.com. From here, we enter our username and password. The first tip is to know the lay of the land. Things look totally different here in this version of Webmail from what you're used to in earlier versions of Exchange Webmail. Notice that the options for mail, calendars, and contacts have moved from the lower left-hand part of the screen to this upper blue horizontal bar. Something that confuses a lot of clients is Conversation View. By default, Conversation View is turned on in 365 Webmail. Notice here this message from Ron Bratz. There's a chevron next to the subject here, indicating that I've got some messages that are hidden underneath the main message. So Conversation View takes messages that have the same subjects and groups them together. So if this chevron is collapsed, you may not see that you've got other messages underneath this. To turn that off, simply click here and turn off Conversation View. Messages are displayed individually and not grouped. Another nice feature of 365 Webmail is the ability to right-click messages. If you right-click this message, you can see that you have options where you can delete, you can move messages to folders, you can even choose categories for these messages, even create rules. If I'd like to move a message, I can create a subfolder under my inbox, create new folder, click on a message, and drag it over. So you can see that there's a lot of Outlook functionality that's embedded right here in Webmail. There are a lot of customizations that you can also do to your Webmail interface. By clicking this gear icon here, I have the option to change themes. You choose that. There are over 20 skins available. I like cats, so I'll choose this one. Click OK. Let's talk about actions in the preview pane. New messages, replies, and forwards can now all be directly sent in the preview pane. Notice this message here. I have options to reply, reply all, and forward right here in the preview pane. If I click new message, here it is again in the preview pane. If you prefer a separate window for your messages, you can click this icon here to pop out this window. Advanced Mail Options. Here I've got a draft of a new message. If I click on 2, just like in Outlook, I'll display the global address list. Not only do I have the global address list, but I also have access to my contacts, other contacts, rooms, groups, everything that I would need to choose somebody to send this message to. I'll go ahead and choose Ron. Click OK. If I click this dot dot dot, I get even more options. Show BCC, the importance, and also show message op options. Notice here I can request a delivery receipt and request a read receipt right here in Webmail. How to open other mailboxes that aren't your own. So there are two ways to do this. The first way is to drop down the arrow next to your name and open another mailbox. Now, 
I have permission to view Ron Bratz's mailbox, but not send as. So the permissions must be in place first before you attempt to do this. If you try to open someone's mailbox to which you don't have permission, this will fail. If I type Ron's name, choose it, open, notice another window pops. I'm able to have full access to Ron's mailbox. Now, if I try to send a reply from Ron's mailbox, this should fail out because I do not have send privileges. And you can see there's an error here. Okay? Now, the second way to view another mailbox is to, back in your own webmail, right-click your name and add a shared folder. At this window, you can type in Ron's name again and add. Now Ron's inbox will appear here in my own webmail. You can see it's the same window. There's not a second window that's popped. This is also good for viewing shared mailboxes. Again, the permissions must be set up before you attempt to do this. But if I right click my name and then add a shared folder, I can type in the name of a shared mailbox, resume, add, and now you can see I have the shared mailbox here on the left hand navigation part of my screen. Let's talk about calendars now. First choose calendar at the top of the screen. Notice right away that I'm in my work week view, but this can easily be changed to a daily view or a full weekly view including Saturday and Sunday or the monthly view. I'll go ahead and choose work week view. Also notice at the top of the screen here the current week is highlighted. If you wanted to go to different weeks, you can simply you know, choose weeks that are displayed here. Or you could come over here and you could cycle through the different weeks in April and May. If you wanted to change the month, you could choose these arrows here. Go forward, go back, whatever you'd like to do. To make a simple appointment, simply click into a day and a time and enter the appointment right here in OWA. Other options can be revealed by right-clicking your calendar. You can see that you can share a calendar here, manage permissions, even choose a color. I'll go ahead and choose yellow. Sharing calendars is a wonderful feature of Office 365. To share a calendar, you can click Share, upper right hand part of the screen. Start typing someone's name you'd like to share your calendar with. You can even choose full details, limited details, or just free busy information. I'll just go ahead and choose free busy information. And then send. Ron has already shared his calendar with me. To show his calendar, all I have to do is right click other calendars and open calendar. Again, type Ron's name, choose open, and then you can see Ron's calendar is here, overlaid right on top of mine. And my appointments are in the light yellow here, and you can see Ron has his color coded differently. Now, if that view seems to be a bit confusing, all you have to do is uncheck Ron's calendar and yours appears individually here again. Instead of entering a simple appointment directly on the calendar, I'd like to click New Event here to reveal advanced options for my event. Give your event a name. If you've got conference rooms set up in your Office 365 system, you can choose a room from this screen.
For attendees, if I click the plus sign here, I can choose contacts from my global address list and also from my other groups here. I'm going to go ahead and choose Ron. Double click, select OK. Choose an event date and time. I'm going to change this time to be 12 o'clock and the duration is going to be two hours. I've got a scheduling assistant here that I can click on just to be sure that the time I've chosen for, for my event is a good time for both Ron, myself, and the conference room. So notice my block of time here. There's some conflicts that you can see. You can see that actually Brian has lunch and Ron has lunch at those times. I can simply click and drag this window to an available time slot. Three required, zero conflicts. Notice my time has changed for my event here. And I can see that I have zero conflicts for my attendees. And the conference room is free. I'll go ahead and select OK. If I click dot dot dot, I have more actions. I can choose to insert an attachment or a picture. Perhaps there's a flyer or something that I'd like to include with my uh, webinar invitation. I can even choose to add a color category to the event. When I'm ready, simply click send. Let's talk about people, aka contacts. If I choose people here, from the top of the screen, I'm taken into my contacts database. Notice I have my global address list here along with conference rooms and groups. One nice feature of the new Office 365 webmail is something called linked contacts. I've got a Josh Smith here and a Joshua Smith. I'm pretty sure they're the same people. I've got a phone number for Josh Smith for Joshua Smith, I have just an email address. If I click this Manage button here, <clears throat> the system is going to automatically search out contacts if things are duplicates. If it can't find anything, you can start typing a name. Let's choose Josh. There he is. I'm linking a contact from Joshua Smith to Josh Smith. I'm going to click link. You can see the two cards are there and then OK. Now I no longer have two Josh and Joshua Smith cards. I've got one Josh Smith card with an email address and a phone number. seems like everyone's on LinkedIn these days. Many of us have tons of external connections. Most of my contacts on LinkedIn have their profiles w really well built out with information like email addresses. Notice this connect to social network button here. If I click that, I have the option to connect my Office 365 webmail contacts to my LinkedIn account. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now if I refresh the screen, and choose people once again, you see here under my contacts a new LinkedIn subfolder. If I click that, I have access to all of my LinkedIn contacts and all of the information that they have built out in their profiles. Let's talk about advanced options in Office 365 webmail. First, click the gear icon on the upper right hand part of the screen, and then options. On the right part of the screen are some shortcuts to some popular features of Office 365. 
forwarding mail, changing passwords, or setting up an out-of-office reply. The connected accounts link here will allow us to connect an external account directly into our Office 365 webmail. I could also forward my webmail to an external account here. On the Organize Email tab, Inbox Rules, I can create rules for my mailbox. Here under Settings, the Mail tab, I can create my email signature. I can also do some advanced options for my, the way my messages look or the appearance of webmail. And the same thing with calendar. You can control the appearance of your calendar here. Under regional, I can set the language and also the time zone of Office 365. Like what you see? We have many more Office 365 insights at liftoffonline.com.